Hi everybody. Welcome back to Jenkins Boat Works. I am Chuck Jenkins. This video is going to be our fourth lesson in learning to sail. We've had three previous. The first one was five knots. You need to know how to tie. The second one uh, dealt with sailing terminology, terms you need to know and understand so that uh, you'll know what I'm talking about. The third video uh, had to do with points of sail. So in other words, the boats, how the boat's facing toward the wind and how to use the wind to go where we want to. This video is going to get more into the physics of sailing and what actually makes the boat go. So I'm very excited about this one. It, it's kind of a two-part video. The first part of this, we are going to use our snark sunflower and we're going to rig it up and create some fake wind with a great big fan and then we're going to adjust the boat uh, in a different different position so we can see what it's like if we're close hauled if we're on a reach or if we're running so we'll create our own wind and look at the sail shape and where the sail should be positioned on those different points of sail and then the last part of the video, what I'd call the second part, we're going to look at, we've got a chart back up there on the door, and we're going to look at our center of effort, and how you figure out how the wind's affecting the sail, and then also center of lateral resistance, and how these two things combine, and why it's important to understand how these can uh, create either a weather helm or a balanced rig, or a lee helm, which we don't really want. So anyway, we're glad you're here. Uh, if you find that you're not understanding what I'm saying because of the terminology, you might go back and look at that second video. But I think you're gonna get it. So we're glad you're here. Let's jump in and look at the physics of, of sailing. Okay, so this is a little snark sunflower and it's a very simple little boat it has a mast it has a halyard which you see there the halyard is what we use to raise the sail and you can see that the halyard is attached to the sail and then we'll just pull on this line and raise the sail there's also a sheet that controls the mainsail, but we'll see that in a minute. Okay, so now we're going to raise the sail. So in order to do that, we pull on the halyard, and we raise the sail up all the way to the top. And then we tie it off. In this case, I have a belaying pin, but much more commonly would be a cleat. I tie a cleat hitch, and that's secure. <coughs> this line back here is our main sheet. And this is what we control the sail with. So the sail can go way out. It's attached to a little traveler back here. So that's what we look like. Now, we're gonna create our own wind with a big fan because I want to look at the sail shape. So we've got the fan running and we are at about 45 degrees angle to the boat. And you'll see that the sail's trying to go away from the wind and act like a wind vane. And there's Toby, hold on dog. Um, and so anyway, I'm pulling it out there to where it really is facing uh, cleanly into the air that's being generated by the fan, which is back behind here that you can't see. There it is. It's a big shop fan. So you'll be able to see here, I'm gonna stand directly behind it, and then you can see what kind of angle we're at there. All right, now we're gonna trim the sail or bring it in just a little bit so that we can get some shape on it. And this is what you would need to do 
if you were sailing close hauled, close to windward. And I've got it over trimmed just a little bit there. I'm gonna tie it off over here by the canoe and it's gonna pull out, that's nearly perfect. Now we're gonna be able to take the camera and walk around here and you're gonna be able to see that it's puffed out there. So on the front side of the sail here, it is convex, meaning bubbled out, whereas on the inside of the sail is more concave. This is really important because basically what a sail can do, especially when going to windward, is create lift, much like an airplane wing does. An airplane wing has more surface over the, over the top than the underneath. That's, that's what allows it to get off the ground. And so similarly, your sail creates lift because of the shape that it takes. All right, now I shifted the boat to where the wind is coming at the side or a beam. And so this would be a beam reach the reach is our, our second point of sail where the, the wind is coming at us sideways. And you would let the sail out oh, about halfway. So see, we're not close hauled anymore. And in each successive point of sail, the further you get away from sailing toward the wind, the more you let the sail out. So when you're closer to the wind, it's in tight. When you're on a reach like this, it's out about halfway. And then when you're on a run, when the wind's directly behind you, most of the time you've got the sail flat out. And that's what we're gonna see here. At this point, you don't have a whole lot of sail shape in the front of the sail helping you because all the air is coming straight onto the back of the sail. So it may still puff out, and have some shape, but you're not getting the kind of lift that we were talking about earlier. I'm picking up the main sheet here. You see that figure eight knot in the end of it so that it doesn't run through those little parts on the boom of the sail so we wouldn't lose it. That's how you adjust the sail when you're sailing. So you always got to know where the wind is coming from so you know how to adjust your sail. All right, so we are going to get into some uh, more advanced things with regard to the balance of a boat. And this is very important when you're sailing because you will feel, especially if you have a tiller, you will feel some pressure on the tiller depending on how balanced the rig is. I generally like to have a little lee, I'm sorry, weather helm, because if somehow you lose control of the boat, it should be like a wind vane and point up into the wind. It'll lose power and you can regain control. Lee helm, on the other hand, uh, not so good because if you would maybe get knocked out of the boat, uh, that boat is going to turn away from the wind and probably sail away. And so that, that's not at all good. Also, when you're pointed toward the wind, it's, um, I think, easier to sail if you have to pull on the tiller just a little bit. Let's say you're on the windward side of the boat. You're heading toward the wind 45 degrees off and you have to feel that you've got to pull the tiller back towards you just a little bit to keep it from going toward the wind. It helps to uh, know where the wind's coming from and also to uh, keep her off of the wind enough so that you can make your forward progress. So we're gonna look at a diagram of uh, a boat with the sails and talk about center of effort and center of lateral resistance. So let's get into that. So we have our picture of our boat here. 
This is our main sail here. This is a jib sail. This is our dagger or center board, which we would drop down, especially if we're going to windward. Uh, that helps keep the boat from sliding off to leeward. If the wind's coming from say here, and you're trying to sail to the wind, you're gonna have a lot of pressure on this sail trying to push the boat away from the wind. This center of lateral resistance will keep the boat from sliding off to leeward, away from the wind. All right, so you have your main sail, and in order to figure out where your center of effort is, you draw some lines from, from each corner to a midpoint. Up to the head, from your tack, that's the tack, that corner of the sail, up to the midpoint of the leech. This is the leech. Uh, where it's attached on the mast is the luft, this is the foot. This back here is the clue, and typically where your main sheet would be attached to control the sail. So once we draw our lines, we can see here that we have our center of effort on the main sail right there. Now we do the same thing on the jib, draw our lines to our midpoints and our center of effort on the jib is here. So if both sails are up, it moves your center of effort off the main sail in line with this to a point about here. This sail's much bigger than the jib, so it's not halfway in between, it's still further back. Where your dagger board is, the center of it is your center of lateral resistance. If you have your boat in the water and you are wanting to figure out where the center of lateral resistance is, if you were up at the front of the boat and you pushed on the bow, it would push the front away. Similarly, if you were in the back of the boat standing there at the dock and you push the stern away from the dock, it's going to go out. If you get in the middle of the boat where the lateral center of resistance is and you push, the whole boat should go out. So the point of this is that if your center of effort is behind this line, which is your center of lateral resistance, it's gonna act like a wind vane and it's going to try to point the boat up toward the wind. Similarly, if your center of effort is here, you only had a jib sail up, didn't have your main up, you couldn't hardly go to windward, first of all, but second of all, it would try to push you away from the wind. It would try to bring the bow around away from the wind because it's gonna, it's gonna pivot on this center of lateral resistance. So, where we have our center of lateral resistance for both sails here, you can see that that's pretty much in line with the center of lateral resistance. And so that would mean that we would be balanced. And when you had the tiller, you wouldn't feel much pressure one way or the other of it either trying to come up to the wind or either to fall away from it. Having a balanced a balanced center of effort in line with the center of lateral resistance. That's a good thing. Um, a little weather helm, or in other words, if it wants to try to come up to the wind, I like that the best. So um, we would be balanced here. If I only had the main up, you would have to pull on the tiller. The wind's coming this way you would have to pull on the tiller back this way to keep it from going up to the wind. Similarly, if it was trying to go away from the wind, you'd have to push the tiller uh, to leeward to keep it from doing that. You'll feel it when you're sailing. You will be able to tell pretty quickly whether or not she's got some weather helm or is balanced or lee. So I hope that helps explain that some. Uh, there is uh, nothing like being on the water to, to really understand this. Uh, leave your questions in the comments. We'll try to answer them.
If you like the video, remember to like and subscribe. We'll see you next time.